Hi, everyone. I'm Paul with Madcap Software, and we are moving along in this uh, video series, Print-Based Output and Madcap Flare. Really, at this point, we've kind of been going up the hill. And we've got the hardest stuff behind us, and it, I think at this point, really, we're starting our, our descent. It's going to be downhill from here. We have uh, gone up through in the PDF from the title page all the way through the chapters, and now we're starting with the back matter. Uh, the appendix, and then we'll follow that with the index. And then then we start actually building the thing and looking at it. Um, so this one, uh, this video is all about the in the uh, appendix, uh, because that's what our mock-up shows. Here's our mock-up, got the chapter. All right, so after the last chapter, an appendix. And we look at this, and this is pretty simple. It's similar to other things that we already have as far as page layout. And then we got content in here and a footer. So this uh, video, this should actually be pretty quick and easy. Uh, we're going to uh, go in and do the page layout. Uh, we're going to do the topic and a little bit of styles, and we should have this thing knocked out. For the page layout, we'll come over here. And once again, we've got some similarities and yet some differences. So we can leverage one of these uh, page layouts. I'm going to make a copy of this chapter's page layout, and I'm going to rename it Appendix. And that is what we are going to start with. So let's open this up. And first thing, change the internal name from Chapters to uh, Appendix. And going to have a normal page in here, same as we've done with the others. Now, I could have just one page layout for all the back matter, uh, put the appendix and the index in there. But I decided to keep these separate because the appendix really does look different from the index. The index, when we get to it, it's got three columns in there. So I think this is just easier to do it this way. Uh, we got the size of it. The page size is going to be the same. The margins are going to be the same. The one thing that we want to change down here in the footer, we don't want to use heading level one and level two in here. We do want to, we actually, we are going to use heading level one, uh, but we, we're going to get level two out of here. So let's open up our mini editor. And that second one is right there. Delete that backspace over that colon, and let's see what we got. Heading level one, divider, page number. That's what we want. Okay, so that one is done. However, I am thinking about uh, another thing I want to show you is how in the course of a PDF, you can change the configuration of pages. So this is portrait. It's eight and a half inches wide, 11 inches tall. Let's say that I've got some content like a big table with lots of columns, and I really want to use landscape in order to show it all. And it's going to be part of my appendix. So I'm going to make a copy of this, and I am going to rename it landscape, uh, appendix landscape. Like that. So I'm going to close this one right here. Let's open up the landscape. And right now, of course, it is identical. It's portrait in here. So I'm going to double click outside of a frame so I can get to the properties. And I can, I can actually add this in my internal uh, name for this. So I know that that's my landscape. So right now, the orientation is portrait. And I'm going to change it to landscape. Click OK. And so there it is. So you can see now it's 11 inches wide and eight and a half inches tall. You can see my uh, footer is kind of isolated down here because the height of it changed. It used to go down here and the width changed. So we're going to have to move this thing up into here. And we'll just drag this to the width. So we have it like that. 
Okay. Now, one thing I do want to explain to you is you open up the original and you see the body frame in here. It takes up this amount of space and we've got three quarter inch margins around on those sides and an inch at the bottom. Now, when I changed the uh, configuration, notice that I was able to maintain the uh, size of the body frame, the margins and everything. Why did that happen? Well, oh, double click on the frame. It's these anchors in here. I have these set around the edge. So if I click off of that, that's not set. That's not set. Click on it. You get that orange. That's set. And what that means is this, uh, it's um, distance away from the edge of the paper is going to be locked in if I make changes such as the uh, the configuration from landscape to portrait. That's why that stayed. If I hadn't had those locked in, then I probably would have had to you know, click and drag the body frame to get it set. So that is the benefit of those anchors. It's pretty much all we need to do with our uh, page layouts. So now we can just move on to the topic. Now, when we look at our mock-up of this appendix, uh, the graphic designer just went from the title down to heading three, and then we got some bullets in there. And I, I'm not too concerned about this stuff down here uh, because the appendix will be whatever content I put in it, not necessarily these things. And uh, one other thing that I noticed is the bullets in here are actually smaller than they were in the chapter. So again, I might have a conversation with her and say, do we really want the bullets to be bigger than the text you know, up in the, the chapters? So I might change that. So what do we notice about this? Well, the look of the page, this is similar to, the heading is similar to the TOC, the generated TOC up here. You got the heading and then this horizontal rule under it. One of the big differences is we didn't want the table of contents to be repeated down here in the generated TOC, but we do want the appendix up here. Uh, we, we want it to make an appearance in here and tell us what page it's on. So we're going to have to deal with that. Now, what content do I want in here in my appendix? Well, I was thinking about this, and what I decided to do is put a big table, like I, I described, with lots of columns in it. And that way I can illustrate the landscape page. What I did was I went ahead and in this folder, I added this topic called Big Freaking Table. So I've got this heading and I've got this uh, Latin text and then I've got a really long, wide table in here. And that's what our, I'm thinking, okay, that's what I'm going to put in our appendix. Now let's talk about, again, how we want the appendix to show up in uh in our generated TOC. So I've got a couple of options in here because the mock-up doesn't tell us how the appendix is going to look in here. So I could do, I have a couple of options. I could do it similar to uh, what I've done with the chapters where I've got appendix uh, on one line and then uh, heading under it uh, like that with the, you know, the page numbers. Or I could just have appendix here and then a leader and a page number at the end of that. I could do either one of those. Also, you might have a PDF that has multiple appendixes. And so you, you might decide to apply auto numbering to that too, appendix A, appendix B, and so on. In this video, we're going to keep it simple, just one appendix. So we're not going to do any auto numbering on that. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, do the same thing that I did with the chapters and the headings underneath it. So I am going to create a separate topic like I did before uh, for these other things. In my print only uh, folder, I'm going to create a new uh, topic and call it appendix. And this will be simple because I'm just going to have the word appendix in it like this. And it's got an H1. And then 
underneath this, we've got that horizontal line and we already have it styled. So we just need to insert it. So we come over here, insert, and that was our full width uh, right there. So I've got that in there. And then I'll get rid of this down here. And again, so by keeping this in a separate topic, this will make us make it easy for us later on to, you know, have an outline TOC that's actually it can serve as a template. And um, this thing will just all be set and can slide whatever the appendix content is underneath it. Now I do need to create another style in in our style sheet for the appendix so that it's uh, treated so that it's treated differently from the regular h1 in the pd uh, pdf toc and the topic okay so let's uh, do that let's open up our style sheet so we got h1 selected in here and what i'm going to do is create a class of this and I am going to call it appendix. Look okay. And it's inheriting everything that the H1 has, uh, but I'm gonna go in here to this uh, print medium and that MC heading level. Well, I had changed the MC heading level for the regular H1 from one to two before, but I want this to be a one. I do want it at that first level. So it's gonna be different from the, you know, the other, the regular H, H1s. I'm gonna select or save that, come back in here and I will apply this H1 appendix. And it looks exactly the same, but you can see it's H1 appendix right there. Now, when we get to the part where we build the output, we might notice that, oh, this, it doesn't quite look like what we thought. But again, you, we come back and you make adjustments. So we do have our content for this, the big freaking table. Uh, so it's already created. And it, later on, when we get to our outline TOC, we'll move that in there so that it knows that that is the content in our appendix. Now, what about uh, thinking ahead this is a long table. We got a, a table header row and lots of regular rows and columns. Goes and goes and goes and goes. Well, in print output, it is just going to automatically repeat the header rows, which is probably what most people want. So we don't need to do anything special for that. It's just going to work. Uh, let's see what page layout we're using here. Yeah, we are using the, it is associated with the it's associated with the landscape right now. So you're seeing how it would look with, uh, you know, being able to show all the columns. If I switched it over to the regular appendix, not the landscape, it would be, you know, more narrow like that. Now, later in another video, I'm going to show how when we get to the appendix, I'm going to split this so that this part shows in portrait, but then our table shows in landscape. Not much else to do here. We have our page layout. We've got a topic for it, and we've got a topic for the beginning of the appendix. So we're done. And now we can just move on to the next video uh, where we'll finish out the uh, back matter, the index, and then we're going to start connecting things.